Growth in dentistry, well, it's definitely um, making the practice bigger, making the team bigger, um, making the availability of technology bigger, Hmm. because you can't afford all that stuff unless you have growth to pay for it, right? This is Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast where we ask the question, what does growth in dentistry look like to you? I'm Katie Polson, a dental hygienist and your host. Welcome to a special episode of Growth in Dentistry for our Practice Growth series. I'm Katie Polson. And I'm Adam Smith. And we are excited to continue our conversation with practices in their in their growth and doing a deep dive into how they've succeeded. So a big old welcome and hello to anybody who hasn't listened to these podcasts. Just a little bit of a little bit of background. What we really wanted to do. This is a little bit different than the rest of our episodes uh, where we tackle a problem uh, for about 30 minutes and give you some key key input on, on how to tackle those problems. These, these episodes, we really wanted to highlight those practices that were in it, uh, making a difference in their community and, and, and really succeeding doing it. And because we have access to over 10,000 practices of data, we look a lot of numbers and we get a chance to talk to a lot of practices. And so uh, we're really excited to be able to highlight some of the best practices that we've come across. Um, but before, before we get started on, on introducing this, this amazing practice uh, from New Providence Dentistry in New Providence, New Jersey, I wanted to quickly just do a, some housekeeping. Our current customers, I've said it before, but if you aren't a member of our DI community on our growth platform, I'd really encourage you to go there. There's some great conversation on how to implement data in your practice, and it's a space where customers can kind of talk to one another uh, without uh, just troubleshoot things that might be, or give good advice. I don't know. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't have any problems. Maybe you just want to be the one to help. That would be great too. Um, also, if you are not a current customer of, of dental intelligence, we're doing a great giveaway for those that listen to the show. Uh, you're getting, you'll get a $50 gift card when you complete a demo. If you go to get.dentalintel.net forward slash podcast, and that link will be in our show notes. So without further ado, we have Dr. Elizabeth Beth, Erko of New Providence Dentistry in New Providence, New Jersey. And we also have her amazing officer, Tiago, with us. So we're so glad to have you both. Thank you so much for taking the time out of a Thursday morning to Thursday evening, afternoon. I don't know where we are anymore. <laughs> it's been a day, but to, to record, I, I, it's a big ask when I, I get on the phone calls with these practices and say, okay, now you're going to have to have a one hour of uninter- uninterrupted time. And that's, that's asking a lot. So we so appreciate you coming on to do this. Oh, thank you for having us. Yeah, no problem at all. Happy to be here. Yeah. So tell me, first of all, um, do people call you Dr. Beth, Dr. Harry? What, what do they call you at the office? Um, well, I mean, they call me all kinds of things. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with Beth. Okay. I just, I, I'm so used, because as a hygienist, I'm so used to people calling people doctors by their- You're so, fine. Person. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So Beth, tell me a little bit about your, your, your background. Um, and then uh, actually let's start with Tiago and then we'll go to Beth because Beth has some really right. great stories on being an associate that I want her to share. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Uh, I'm actually a dentist from Brazil. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. You yeah, did not I'm tell graduated. me that. Oh, really? I didn't. No. It's new now. I was saving for this time. <laughs> yes, obviously. Wow. Well, That's what cool. do I know? Congratulations. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I graduated about 10, 12 years ago. And okay. And yeah, I am That's I'm awesome. here. Yeah, and yeah. now you're here. <laughs> That's amazing. What part of Brazil? Uh, Sao Paulo. Oh, yeah, awesome. The city. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we're, we're, I'm sure she's, she's glad to have you in the practice with her. Uh, uh, awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell me a little bit about, uh, about your background being an yeah. associate and then how you ended up, um, with your practice now. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I graduated from dental school in 2006 from NYU, and then I did a one-year residency. And then I was working for, um, I mean, I tried a couple of places and I found a place uh, in Morristown where I worked for like six years. And then he hired someone directly out of school, um, and had that person do my new patient exams out of network. So I sort of, it was a weird, awkward situation for me. I was like, okay, this is strange. I've been here six years and now, 
uh, someone out of school is my patients were like, how come you can't just do my exams? And I couldn't really tell them it's about money that that didn't feel right. So mm -hmm. I just ended up just leaving. And, uh, I, I went from the pot to the fire and I didn't realize <laughs> it when I was making, I went to sort of like a pseudo DSO practice. And, um, I don't know, I, I, I guess I got sold because he made it sound so great. And, um, it wasn't that great. It was, a, <laughs> it was working two rooms and, um, getting pretty low, uh, compensation. I, I, I don't know if it was uh 25% of collections, which is like not really what the area calls for, but anyway, somehow he sold that to me and I bought it <laughs> and, uh, I worked there for some time and, uh, you know, it wasn't going awesome. Um, and then, uh, the sterilizer had malfunctioned and it had been malfunctioning for six months and I had no idea until one day I saw a list and it, it said that the sterilizer basically was broken for six months and that the owner had known the whole time. And so I freaked out and I was let go like two weeks later. And I was, I think like 40, 40 at the time. And <laughs> the person who owned the practice was a son of a dentist, which is nothing, whatever. Okay. Um, but I mean, I feel like sometimes it makes it, I don't know that a dentist would, I maybe, I don't know. Anyways, broken sterilizer, just it, it's yeah, wrong. It's, right. It's, and it, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. And, um, we, we take ethics courses in dental school and dental hygiene school <laughs> yeah. and you, and you think I, is this common sense? I think this is common sense. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's not. <laughs> I think nobody would do that, but I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to like, you know, yeah. give him a little, like some, maybe he just doesn't realize how bad that really is, but I think right. he knew. Yeah. Um, and, and so anyways, I was like, okay, I never actually, I kind of want to always be an associate. That's sort of, I have my family. I have two kids. I was like in my career path, I'm like, oh, I don't need to own a practice. That's like crazy. But then I got fired at 40 and I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, I'm going to get less and less hireable as I get older and I'm letting someone else really control my career. I, I almost felt like I had no choice, but to open my own practice, honestly, like I just mm -hmm. felt like that I have to go this way. And, and looking back now, like, I wish I had done it way earlier. Like it's, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of work. I'm not going to say that it's not, but it's, it's, um, it's really, you can do a lot more. I mean, maybe, I don't know if my associate would feel like she, I mean, we could ask her, I guess, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's really nice to be able to control things. Um, and, you know, take a CE and then, um, buy the equipment that goes with it. Like just really have total control, you know, like when you're an associate, that's not, I mean, I would listen to mine and if she wanted to buy something, yes, but in the associate positions that I had, that wasn't the case, you know, like you take some CE and you go back to the office, you're all jazzed up and the owner's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah just it's a lot of money yeah, too much uh, money and we'll give you like, we'll oh. give you a month and you'll cool down from that idea yeah yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so um I I don't know it's it's a lot it's it's more fun this way yeah that's good and obviously it's not it's not for everybody but I I love that you um and that's kind of what I wanted to pick your brain about because I feel we definitely are moving into a period of time where people it's great. I mean, DSOs are becoming more of a, of a, of a thing. Um, and, and I think a lot of dental, a lot of graduating dentists think that that, uh, owning your own practice is just not an option or it seems too scary or, or, or whatever. So uh, I love yeah. that you felt like, I'm mean, obviously you felt like this is where you had to go, but, but I love that you thought, well, I should have just done this a lot sooner. Right. Yeah. So. In hindsight, it would have um, would have made a lot of difference. Uh, you know, I mean, it would have helped earlier, but I mean, I was busy with the kids and whatever. Right. And, and I see that has, I know why people are because it's a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. Right. Like to open your own practice, to sign your name, you're already I mean, I guess I was I went to NYU. That's not a cheap school. Yeah. But and, and so in, in a lot of ways, I was numb to taking out money because <laughs> I went to one NYU. more hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. A writing debt. Why not yeah. more? Right. Yes. But yeah. It's like, I don't know if you're it just felt like I didn't have a lot of choice. I felt like I, I was facing the age thing and then, um, you know, just yeah. getting along in my career uh, yeah. and then but it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about 
so you you so you're now you've bought into this place this we talked in the pre-show it's a tea an old tea, tea distributors place that she's she's bought this practice that she's starting from scratch tell me a little bit about the process of starting this practice and what you wish you would have known when you first started it oh sure yeah so um when I, my original idea, when I opened the practice, well, with ideal practices was oh, the original plan was to be a solo practitioner and, um, open up and it was going to be five ops, right? That was the, the layout, um, and with a consult room and it had a break room and then it started going along. So that was 2018. And, you know, I opened with three and then we were getting bigger and then I had the five and then we just kept growing. Right. And so then I'm like, okay, well, you know, get rid of the consult room. So we had six and I'm like, okay, I'll give up my office. Now we have seven. And then I'm like, okay, the break room is going to go across the hall. And that's where we are right now. Right. Um, we, so we this is our up- story. We've done this before. <laughs> I, yeah. My, my brother and my dad, we told this. Yeah. We totally did so this. now we have eight. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and a full-time associate, and we're going to bring on another, uh, full-time associate. We have a bunch of hygienists, but if I, I mean, to be honest, when I was opening the scratch start, I thought the space was gigantic. I was looking for like 1800 square feet. And I found this space that had windows all the way around and it was 25, no, 2,700 square feet, something like usable. I forget, you know, it kind of changes, mm-hmm. but, um, I felt nervous, not only from the monetary, like taking out big loans, but from the size of the space, I'm like, am I going to be able to use this amount of space? And it's, I mean, I I think it's hard to know what's going to happen when it, before it happens, but oh my gosh, I could have used the space twice as big, right? Like it's just weird. Well, and the crazy thing is you started in 2018 and uh, we had a pandemic in the middle of that. So the amount of growth that you've had during a pandemic is pretty crazy. I mean, it's it's wild. Yeah. It is super crazy. Yeah, it's good. (laughs) I mean, I think people, you know, when they come into the practices and the other thing, right, I guess uh, my husband says that this, our, the practice is nicer than our house, which is kind of (laughs) funny to me. (laughs) Because it's a dental practice, but um, you know, we had some help decorating it, and I think people feel it and they don't mind as much to be there. Um, it's kind of like a calming, and then have the windows all the way around. Maybe mm-hmm. we've kind of given every illusion that you're not in a dental practice until we pull out the needles and drills. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, so I guess who, what, what's your demographic there? Who, 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 do you, who do you guys? Wait, yeah. So it's funny. I feel like this. I've seen this before, but it. it, I feel like you kind of attract your own uh, age group in some way. You know, like Mm -hmm. so. A lot of my patients are my age, maybe a little bit younger. Um, but that's probably the bulk, the the middle. When you say Mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, so people with families. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great age group to have. They're they're just they have enough cash flow to to want to do something finally. And they probably have work that needs to be done. So, and they still want to keep the and they for still, a long yeah, time. yeah. So, it's true. Uh, no, what, no wonder for the growth. So, <laughs> tell me a little bit about on the call earlier. You talked about how you guys see about eighty to one hundred new patients a month. Is that still that's correct? Where were you yeah. guys at? I mean, like that's a we're going to get into new patient acquisition now a bit. But what is what was that journey? to where you guys were to seeing a hundred patients. Yeah, how patients how to start out? Where'd you focus? Yeah. Where'd they, yeah, where so, did it start um, and how did it transition into where it's at right now? I had a pretty big budget working capital budget from the startup and uh, definitely put in a lot of money for uh, initially in the first like two years we were open. We did a lot of um, postcards. I would drop like 5,000 for the first like three months, I probably did 5,000 every month. And then I would go every other month, like probably pretty consistently. And then, uh, we used, uh, Google AdWords with, a at, with an ad company. And, um, I stopped that about, I think it was, um, April, uh, one year later, right. Because we were getting a lot of new patients and I was like, I don't hear, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 
I just dropped the, the, I'm like, I can always put it back. If we see a drop off, I can, I can put it back. And, um, I stopped it and I didn't see any change, uh, which was crazy, like zero change. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess we don't need to spend that money. Um, <laughs> and are you still doing postcards at this time when you stopped? No, okay. I haven't done postcards in a while, maybe like nine months. I haven't done it. I, I don't think so. It's yes. Quite some time. Yeah. But I, I mean, I love, I love my postcard guy and uh, I'm going to, since we're bringing on a, an associate, I'm, we're probably going to look to get a few more uh, new patients. Uh, so my current associate is taking maternity leave, but she's going to come back full time. And so uh, we'll be three, you know, so I'll probably try to get maybe a little increase. So we'll, um, you know, pick something different to highlight in postcards because uh, they did work well in this area. But I would say the number one, there's a lot of older practices in this area, um, strangely. And I think that is in, in some ways some luck there because um, like some of these practices that have been around for 30 years or so, they have like, you know, 10 Google reviews. So they sort of leave the door open for some organic Google, like pretty easy, right? So now we have like 250 Google reviews. And I think the number two person maybe has 19. So I feel like it's, it's, uh, you know, when people want to get a dentist, right. And so if, if I had more competition in the area, I feel like Google AdWords would be more important for me, but since, uh, nobody is caring about getting Google reviews from their patients besides our practice, really, then, uh, we hit number one, we were number one on the searches like really fast. Yeah. We have some patients calling from 15 miles away. It's just like, <laughs> You just gave everyone the, yeah. the secret. No, I'm just kidding. But, yeah. uh, That's okay. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> also, <laughs> also the, your game. I mean, it's coming at some point, right? Like it's coming. Yeah. Best is looking for some competition. It's worth it's worth noting your your practice name actually also helps with the the uh, searches because a lot of people will yeah. search dentist city city dentist combination yeah. and you've got that in your name, which is also very helpful yeah, so that's super awesome. helpful a lot of people will go with their name or they'll go with something kitschy, yeah so you know I, I was like built I, from the beginning right I didn't necessarily know I was going to work with somebody uh, but from the beginning I'm like we're building this thing to ultimately sell it someday and who it's better to sell uh, like something that's like because I've been an associate under uh, some a practice that was somebody's name, right? And they just, mm -hmm. they come in the door as a new patient and they they just want the person whose name is on the door. And it, it you know, doesn't leave a lot of room for, uh, so even if you're, if you're building it to plan to sell it, you might as well start with a name that doesn't tie you to it. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise your hands are gonna have to be in the mouths to make the money, right? Like yeah. you can't, that's yeah. what my dad used to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's true. Yeah, it really is. It's a smart, it's a smart move. Uh, the name, the, I, the name of your practice is probably, it's a way bigger deal than maybe a lot of people give yeah, it credit. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's my big background is, is search engine optimization. It's how I kind of got into marketing and, and that's a pretty big factor, but also the reviews and, and maybe we can dive into to that process a little bit. Um, maybe going off script a little no, bit. No, you're good. Here. Go but, for it. But, uh, reviews are more than just like, Hey, will you leave us a review and send them a, a review link? Right. Um, how, what, what's the process like in your practice to tell them, you know, do you tell them why it's important? Do you have certain people that you send it to? Do you send it to everyone? What's, what's the process like there? Uh, you know, it's really funny. Uh, cause we, we actually don't try that hard to get reviews, which is, uh, but we have Modeno. And so Modeno will, sends it to everybody. Now for us, you could, you could pick it, as you know, you can pick like what you want. Right. But for us, we, we let it go for everybody. And we have, um, I, I mean, there's a couple of times where I've run to the front. I'm like, Tiago, can you please not ask them for a review? <laughs> <laughs> I'm raising my hand, people, if you're only listening. I have done family. not. Just I have, disable for I now. Have, yep, disable. <laughs> for life. Not like getting angry, angry fofo. Okay, in our yeah. practice, we call yeah. them like flowers, okay, because they need special attention. <laughs> um, and they usually grow. Yes. Very, like, flower, it's not a negative word, just in case, like, yeah. uh, you know, they happen to see flower on their chart. <laughs> you know, I can just still say that they're special. <laughs> yeah. Special, delicate, 
flower. Beautiful. Right. You're very yeah. beautiful. Very nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tip for those of you that are listening. Don't write on the chart, really rude person. Just write flower and everyone will know. Yeah, pain in the ass. Everyone's up on that one too, (laughs) right? (laughs) So true. Oh, that's really great. So, so Modento is just sending things out. You're just doing a really great job and Modento is sending out requests unless you stop it. And yeah, generated tons of good reviews for you. Yeah, I mean- yeah, that's that's the whole process for. Re- I don't ask anybody. I've been in practices where asking for reviews, and now we have enough. Where, I mean, I never. Maybe in the first like month, I might have been uh, mentioning it because I really needed those reviews. Um, but what you know, as I said, once I once I was at nineteen reviews, you know, I was the number one. Mm-hmm. So I, once I got nineteen, I'm like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to, you know, have that uncomfortable minute because I'm ahead of my competition and review number. So uh, whatever happens, happens. I mean, yeah. I, you know. Uh, That's great. Yeah, uh, not to move off of reviews because that is, is a really important part. Although I think some people are getting to a point now. Uh-oh, you're, you're I'm good. sorry. You're, you're good. Some people <laughs> are getting to a point now with reviews where they're in their community and everyone has five-star reviews. You know what I mean? like. And yes. the only way to really set yourself apart is, I mean, just, it's hard to know anymore. You know, it's hard to know who to go to. And so it's word of mouth. And and we talked a little bit about what we call ground marketing in, in the, in the biz, but really what it is, is just community outreach. So talk to me a little bit about how you guys, because you get a lot of word of mouth, new patients. It's not and so how, did, no, how does that happen? Yeah. Yeah. It, it is at least 50% of the practice. You take That's, it. I feel like I've been talking so much, talk, like too much. Know. No, you go ahead. You, you do the talker. <laughs> I, I don't want to be the t- I give it to you, my friends. When, when you say that, Tiago, I think most people that are listening <laughs> wish they were in your shoes, wish they had even 30% of their new patients coming from referrals and word of mouth. So yeah. And I should say really quickly that before we got on, you guys had mentioned that you don't have great building at like building advertising, like it's not easy to find. So not only that, it's not the building that's getting Mm -hmm. people in with ground marketing. It's just people talking. talking. So yeah, take it away. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, I think 85% of the practice is actually word of mouth kind of, uh, 50% would be directly from patients. So they're just telling their friends and family to come here. The other ones are the ones that are just going to Google to find the best dentist in town. Or as I mentioned, 15 miles away, they're just yeah. calling us and, and looking for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In terms of getting our name out there, though, like in the beginning, we did street fairs. I mean, and there haven't been very many street fairs since COVID. Yeah. Every year on September 11th, we do a day of pre-dentistry. And it's mm. actually, it's strangely... Uh, it's not as popular as you would think. I try to get it out there to get the people that need care that can't otherwise afford it. Um, and we're steady, but you, you'd think it would be more. Um, but I think people know that we do it. And, and that's like a, you know, another yeah. way, just give back yeah. kind of thing. Um, yeah, even if, even if they're not participating in free dentistry, the fact that you, they, they know that you are willing to do that for your community is a big thing yeah yeah it definitely helps um put it out there and then anytime anybody asks us for anything we always say yes i mean i you know like uh <laughs> so that's out there now too You're yeah, giving it's, all your out there. It's, it's terrible but like you know like will you sponsor our school play will you uh sponsor my team will you be in this thing like we how about the church bulletin sure you know <laughs> We are there, by the way, every yeah. Sunday. <laughs> if you're in New Providence and you need a dentist, you can find them in the church bulletin. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's awesome. Don't pray the pain go away. Come to us. <laughs> Tiago, you need to do marketing. Great mar- marketing, marketing tagline. Yeah. It's a great well, marketing we, tagline. We try. We try and say yes. Like, okay, so even like we had a patient who's working for his uncle selling bath bombs yeah right and he's like oh can I drop off some samples and we're like sure drop off some samples and 
And then he would like follow it up and he wanted to make a sale. I'm like, oh, how can we implement this? this? Yeah, like where do we fit this yeah. in? So we bought a what 200? 200. We bought 200 bath bombs and we're gonna give them to our patients for like birthday or like nice. We'll just give them out, you know, like just try to say yes, try to work with whoever uh wants, you know, we did a give back to the teacher. Uh we worked, this was a lot earlier on, but before COVID. Um worked with a gift shop in a hair salon and we gave away a toothbrush. Uh, someone had voted in like their favorite teacher. Um, you know, so they got a whole package of uh, based on these three companies coming together of yeah. prize, you know, yeah. and everybody's yeah. sort of uh, put it on Facebook and it spread so that people could vote for their favorite teacher. And then, That's awesome. um, yeah, yeah. But I different stuff. A lot of people will hire a marketer to do a lot of these things right but yeah. you all you've done is open yourself up to saying yes and then more stuff will come to you because they'll say oh how did you get that other or they'll see you in the church bulletin or they'll see you somewhere else and they're like oh we should ask them to donate you know it just yeah. takes a couple times and then it kind of yeah. snowballs i think yeah, yeah. that's awesome so, i mean that's a lot 50 percent new patient yeah. of well you growth. said 50 percent from patient referral right yeah from yeah, from, yeah we're exactly from patient. so so do you have an incentive program? How, how are you doing that? To, or are you just telling people to send their friends? Do you give them a, like a card in their, their gift bag that they uh, are using? What's the, what's the process there? Because I think a lot of people have questions around this as well. Most yeah. people want to have a thriving internal referral program, yeah. but don't. Yeah, we happen to have an incentive program. Uh, every patient gets like a credit in their account if they refer us to somebody else. Uh, I am not aware if everybody knows that though. No, this is not what's <laughs> dragging them to do it. Yeah, they they do they find out after they refer yeah. oh, somebody. I had a credit. Why is yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we uh, we put a credit in there, twenty five dollars for any adult patient that gets referred, and they get a credit. Um, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that leads to. I mean, maybe it makes them happy. Get some free fluoride. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys use the Modental Loyalty Program? Is oh, yeah. How you do yes, it? Do. Okay. Talk, yeah. Talk, yeah talk, talk to us a little bit about that. So, well, first of all, so the Modental Loyalty Program, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's a way that it's a it's a patient app for, for in, you know, customized to your practice, and you can use it kind of however you want to incentivize patient, patients to show up on time or, or do whatever you want. Um, and, and it's kind of a newer idea. It's not one that has been done a lot in dentistry. And sometimes we get like, oh, that's amazing. And sometimes like, I, I, why would I need that? So talk to me a little <laughs> bit about how you utilize that. Cause it sounds like you're using, utilizing it a little bit in this instance, but. Yeah, no, we use it. Uh, well, it's funny because uh, it's not, it's not for every patient. Right. But the ones that like it really, really like it. Like they like it so much. Like they're you know, and it's for everything. It's for uh, checking in, uh, confirming, um, you know, it, and they get points uh, too. And we've had people save their points up, like they're saving for something specific on our review, right? So, or on our reward thing. Like we gave away a toothbrush, bleaching trays, um, you know, just, and it's great because it takes a while to get an electric toothbrush. It really does take a while. <laughs> so um, when like they have to do a lot of either a lot of dentistry in the office or just be like a patient up for a really long time. And at that point, you know, and they're so into it, they deserve a toothbrush. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, like they, they either had a, you know, a ton of work. They spent a ton of money in the practice. They they definitely deserve a toothbrush. They're our, our huge followers. And, and that just makes them so happy. They're like, score. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I did this because I was on time. Right. Yeah. And, and, um, and I, I, it doesn't take much time on your end. Right. Like, cause I think Zero. Would, okay. Yeah. We get a notice when someone's due a prize. That's yeah. our full involvement after setting it up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so, I'm just thinking like there, there are so many ways that you could utilize that as a, as a practice. And like you said, it's like that by the time that they actually get what they're, what they're trying to earn up, it's so worth it for the practice to just like, well, you showed up to 10 appointments on time. So we didn't have to worry about that. You checked into all of them. You 
yeah whatever it is yeah yeah Yeah, for sure it it definitely is not one of those it's not something that and like you said it's not for everyone I mean you'll have patients like why do I want an app on my phone for my dentist that's yeah but but I mean like for those of you for those that it works well for that's really awesome so uh you spend so you've so you've spent a lot of money and time and you've built up these new patients and I want to talk to you a little bit about keeping them in your practice yeah <laughs> it's a it's a really easy it's not well it's like apparently it's easy for you to get new patient acquisition but for most people it is not but that being said how do you use how do what do you do I guess to keep them engaged obviously you're using the loyalty program but what other things do you do to to get your patients to want to say yes and keep going back into the practice. Yeah. I mean, I think they see the changes, right. And they see the investment in technology that we're making. Cause we, we didn't start off with all this stuff, you know, but mm-hmm. uh, now we have a ton of stuff and they see that they see, they see that. Right. Uh, and they, uh, so like, for example, the iTeros, right. We have two iTeros and we don't scan every patient. We're trying to scan every new patient. That doesn't happen. We scan <laughs> patients uh, that have recession uh, or if they're uh, wearing their teeth and they're not owning that wear uh, mm-hmm. so that we can come back to them and uh, like a couple years and see, because I mean, you honestly can't say if they're still like personally, right? If someone comes in with worn teeth, I don't know if that wear happens like in the past year or if it's, you know, if it's been coming or if it like they used to be different and they wore it down. So it's great to like take a scan and see if they're actively damaging their teeth. You can overlay the scans like two years later. Uh, and then it's a lot easier for them to have ownership of their problems. If you have a piece of technology that's kind of, they can see it for themselves. Yeah. Imaging for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Funny that you mentioned this. We had a patient today. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, it was like a huge improvement on recession. You can clearly see uh, doing SRP over time, how much she improved. Oh, really? And Janice was just like, she was smiling ear to ear. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And without that, you know, it's, it's not just for the patient. I mean, it's really hard to, as a hygienist, to do scaling and replaning and be like, well, who knows if it's going to work, you know? <laughs> like, it's, it's so nice to be able to track that. Yeah. and see that and then that's also a great buy-in for your team member today right she's like oh i'm making a difference and i feel yeah. really good about my job today yeah that yeah, was the interesting um this is our fourth fourth of these this type of uh of interview that we've done and almost everyone has brought up uh, you know in in patient loyalty and and winning the trust of the patients imaging imaging the visibility of what's going on in their mouth intraoral pictures uh, like you guys mentioned, 3D scanners, you know, you're, you're looking at people want, and I mentioned this on a previous one, but people today, I think are probably more skeptical of authority than they've ever been. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So just the fact that you're the dentist telling them, Hey, you need this. That's not, that's not it anymore. Like you, if, <laughs> if you don't realize that you're not paying attention to anything that's going on in, in the news. Right. Right. So the fact that you're giving them the pictures and saying, look, I'm not just saying this, like, here is the picture. Here's the picture later. This is what's happening. Um, that's huge in winning, winning the loyalty. Um, w- one thing I'm curious about is how much extra time does that take in your office to uh, paint that picture for the, the patients and, and win that loyalty? Do you, do you have longer appointment times than a typical office would, or is it you just fit it into your your standard exams and? Yeah, we fit it in. So we do an hour and a half for new patients and sixty minutes for uh, recare patients. And that's, uh, so that's, that's number four, four for four of our top performing practices that have said they take an hour and a half for a new or patient. Or hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. And you know, most people take only an hour. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's huge. It makes a difference, obviously. Yeah. That's yeah. what it does. Like it t- you're, you're taking more time out of your schedule, but up front, which can feel like a sacrifice, but the amount of growth that you've had in three years obviously shows that it works. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Didn't mean to um, sorry. Oh, yeah. I interrupted no, you. I, I was just, I was just curious. Cause last time I was surprised it was three for three. 
And then you said it again. I was like, yeah, okay. This is a very common yeah. theme. But here. so it's not, does it feel like a sound? I mean, cause to, to take proper imaging, you have to train your team. You have to make sure everybody's set up and ready to go when you're in the room. Like, yeah, there's pushback. Initially there was a lot of pushback, uh, from mostly from the more seasoned hygienists, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, you see, they, they got yeah. it. They got around it. You know, it's, it's like riding a bike. It takes some time. And if you're older, it takes more time. Mm-hmm. So just more training, more encouragement. And, uh, but, but, but we take into oral photos too. So even they yeah. get the image, they'll always get into oral photos, every hygiene, every time. And it's helped us a lot of, a lot of times. And, and we often also take it during restorative, right? Because when you're diagnosing decay, you're pointing to like a black dot on an x-ray, yeah. right? And they're like, okay, maybe. And so if you take a picture of what that actually looks like, and then what it looks like cleaned out, and then what it looks like filled, you've gained a lot. Of, and that actually only takes an extra five minutes to grab those photos before, during, after. Uh, a few times where I'm like, oh, you know, I'm in the weeds. I don't have time for this. Mm-hmm. I There was one case where it, there, this patient had a literally a black hole on his front tooth, like literally a black hole. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't need photos. He looks at himself in the, in the mirror every day, right? He doesn't need photos. He should know. Right? So I fixed the thing. And, and I'm, I'm not saying it was like nickel size. It wasn't like the size of a dime, that hole, but it was big, okay? Like big black hole, front tooth. And, and I was so excited at the end that it got a great cosmetic result. And I hand him the mirror and I'm like, look. And he's like, oh, what'd you do? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what about the black hole? You don't remember that one? Like at all? Oh, God. Come on now. It's like I kick myself. I'm like, every if I if it's gonna be like that, then it's just gotta be a picture every time. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and here's the here's the thing there is uh, I see this a lot is things that because we're in this industry a lot and we we're dealing with it a lot, it's like things that you think are commonplace and common knowledge. And it's like, obviously you've seen this, Mm -hmm. you, someone that's in the chair or someone that's on the other side of the the table, they're not in the same industry as you, right? They don't, they don't know that same thing. You really do have to build that bridge. Um, One question that I have and that I've heard as kind of, I've, I've mentioned this to, to people before, like take more time, establishing that relationship early on and they'll come back with i don't think the patient would like me taking that much time out of their day for an appointment an hour and a half to two hours um clearly based on the numbers that we've been able to pull from all of these practices that are doing this that's not the case but do you ever hear that response of like why is this an hour and a half appointment uh, it's, it usually starts at the beginning, right? It's it's when they, when we put it in the paperwork for Modeno that it, they should expect to be there for 90 minutes because oh. we did get that feedback. That's and I great. think like in, you know, it's like a clause, like, but mm-hmm. a lot of people are not even reading the paperwork that they're filling out. And so mm-hmm. occasionally we'll get the, like, what I have to be out of here in like, you know, 60 minutes, I gotta, you know, mm-hmm. eat. It I doesn't happen eat. very often, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but it's, it does happen, right? So there are some people that just don't read anything that they fill out. Um, I love that you use the, because our Medento forms can be completely customizable. So you can add that stuff to it. And I love that. I love that you put that there. You're setting expectation for the patient, even if, you know, some of them don't read it, you know, some of them will, and they'll adjust their times without yeah. even knowing. Yeah. To be I, to to be honest, I I went to a, a medical appointment and um, they didn't. I I thought the appointment was going to be quick. Like I I in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'll schedule my next thing 45 minutes later. They had me in their schedule for three hours and wow. and didn't tell me right. And so that that gets me. You know, it's my daughter's graduation. I couldn't say like so. I was that patient to them. Yeah. Um. But that makes me feel like. I almost wish on the confirmations, you know, and maybe you guys can, uh, you yeah. know, I don't know if this is possible. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm just asking, like, can you, like, can Modena work the way to uh, someday have it be like, okay, you're, you're scheduled at this time. Your appointment is planned for 
X it's minutes. A match, that is much, but yeah. Kind of minutes, yeah, you know, like mm -hmm. just to reiterate, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't keep mm -hmm. anyone here for three hours without them knowing, but you know, so like it mostly doesn't come up in dentistry, but I was thinking, oh man, if it's just automated, maybe some people would like to know exactly how long I think they're going to be there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to, I am involved in those meetings and I will bring that up because we are redoing <laughs> our online scheduling right now and our confirmation. So yeah, it'd be interesting. I don't know yeah. if the code can do that, but there, we have wizards that work for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes. They're magical wizards. Um, but, but really I, it's a great idea. And, and, and I love that you're, it's, you're setting the expectation and however, then that sets you up because then you have to be on time. It's and you true. have to it's and a dogger it's yeah. a dogger yeah. like we we are we yeah. are on time yeah so People i wouldn't recommend that. to you if, if if you were caught notoriously late i probably wouldn't give them a time frame but um but also maybe you need that you're like oh well we told them an yeah. hour and a half so this is gonna we're gonna this is gonna put our feet to the fire and we're gonna get in and out of here Keep yeah it's accountable that's good yeah yeah that's good i didn't i haven't thought about that it's a really great one also, like as you're doing that and you're taking more time and doing more, have, adding more pieces to that new patient exam, they're seeing how much importance you're putting on it. And hopefully that transitions over to them of they're getting more invested in it as well. They're seeing more importance behind it. They're putting that additional importance behind it. And because you're getting all the imaging they can see, okay, this is where I am. This is where I, where I, where I would like to be. That will help. We, we've seen this in, in some of the other practices that we've worked with, but um, case acceptance is phenomenally higher when they're taking the time to get them the full visual of what their, their mouth currently looks like and where they want to, to be. So d despite some people may be saying, oh, an hour and a half, that's a long time. It's based on the numbers. To totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. Well, this has been a really quick hour for me, like real quick. <laughs> yeah. It's been super fun. You guys are just, I, I can only, I just getting to know you for the last hour. I can, I can tell that, um, I would jive really well in your practice. <laughs> um, and next time our kids. Come uh, um, to New Jersey. Yeah. Come uh, on. I, I lived in New York. You're, you're the second person that's tried to steal Katie. It's not, <laughs> not going to happen. Oh, all uh, right. Well, but, this is the last question that we ask every single one of our guests. Uh, and it's because it means something to different to everyone. And that is what does growth in dentistry mean to you? And you can answer that together as a team or individually, however you'd like to do it. Did you just say, what does, what growth, does growth, in mm -hmm. yep, growth in dentistry mean to you? And you've had a lot, so... Yeah. Yeah. Growth in dentistry. Well, it's definitely um, making the practice bigger, making the team bigger, um, making the availability of technology bigger because hmm. you can't afford all that stuff unless you have growth to yeah. pay yeah. for it. Right. You, yeah. It's like growth this. is, uh, oh. is more dentistry, more options, right? If you don't have, if new making the practice bigger feeds the feeds the technology which then you know yeah it's a, a cycle circle that's yeah. growth in dentistry and you know what i agree yeah continuing education is is an amazing thing too and to be able to get out there and bring more things to the practice um based on what you learn i mean it's the practice of dentistry right <laughs> you get to know more stuff if you choose yeah that's awesome and, and clearly your patients appreciate your dedication to being a continual learner because they yeah continue to keep coming back. So that's awesome. Well, this has been Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast. Special thanks again to our guests, Beth and Tiago from New Providence Dentistry. And thank you to our marketing department for all their work on this podcast. I'm Katie Polson. Keep growing.